what's up guys we have another game with the black pieces against Leonard 346 he's rated 1669 so he's a boss he tries to hit us with the London we respond to the London with c5 on move 2 it's a unique way of playing they don't like it so white defends the pawn with c3 I think this is already slight inaccuracy I'm gonna go queen b6 and apply pressure to the dark squares now that his bishop has left his own dark square defense. White comes up with queen c1, quite unique, protecting the bishop as well as defending the pawn. Interesting move for sure. Um, what do we want to do? We're just going to develop the knight. Wait a second. I'm so dumb. Oh no, I'm not dumb. That would have been a checkmate. I'm smart. Takes, takes. If I took, he checkmates me. Okay. Not dumb. So, he develops his knight. What does this threaten? Just develops a piece and defends this pawn. Takes, 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 takes. Again, not a checkmate because we moved our knight. So, aha. So maybe we can take now. Let's take now. Okay, he takes. Can we take? Is there a secret something? Is there a sneak attack? Is he trying to sneak attack me? I'm not really seeing it though. All right, I'm going to take his pawn. It's not, I mean, I have two minor pieces out. He has two, so it's not like, you know, he doesn't have a pawn in the center. So it's not like he's has a huge lead in development and I'm wasting so much time by doing this. Um, so let's go for it. Yeah, before he had this, but once the knight develops, the rook protects. He takes, we take. Now, is he going to put a piece here? No, he just develops. Well, in that case, I'm going to move with a forcing move just so I get the turn back. Of course, he's going to develop, but it still gives me the turn back. So Maybe he'll go for a queen trade? No, okay. So he just develops the knight, as expected. I kind of want to castle faster. Sooner rather than later. But if I go for this whole thing and he kicks me, then he gets to jump his knight and do all these weird coordination stuff. So maybe since it's pinned, I go here now, moving the same piece twice, hitting his knight and his bishop, saying, hey, I'm up a pawn, trades are good for me. And I don't have to worry about the Jababa London ideas on the C7 square. I did want a g6 fianchetto, but I think it's a little slow considering if he kicks my queen, which he can, uh, he'll be able to use the c7 square. But now that I do this, okay, he kicks my queen. It's kind of what I was talking about before, but this defends the square, which is a bonus. But if I go here and he kicks me, Takes, takes, takes. Three pawns for the piece. Okay, so. If I go here and he kicks me, what other moves do I have? My knight's hanging. And if I go here and he kicks me. That gives me the extra option of going here. And if he kicks me with the bishop or the pawn, I can go here. And if he pins me with the bishop, well, that's not good. If he pins me with the bishop, maybe b5. 
Does that even work though? Huh, or do I sack my thing for three pawns? That's also interesting. Probably not good though, because his pieces are active and I'm undeveloped. Huh. Alright, so we'll give this a try. We'll give this square a try. And we'll go, f we'll go for this maneuver and see what happens. It's very dubious, but... I don't know if Leonard has what it takes. Yeah, he doesn't have what it takes. He just trades because he wants to develop. That's also fair, but that wasn't the critical line. This lets me off the hook and gives away one of his pieces. He is obviously better developed, but I'm up a pawn. If he lets me consolidate, I just win the game. He moves his queen. What does this threaten? He doesn't allow me to play g6. I think that's his idea. Also stops e5. Kind of smart. So in light of that, I'll have to prepare one or the other. I'm going to go here. This opens up my light scrubber ship and prepares e5. My d-pawn will be weak, but I don't really care. I just want my pieces out. If I have to give him the pawn back at some point. As long as I gain the initiative, I don't really care. Initiative is awesome. So is material, so either way I'm happy. He hits my queen, more developing moves. Makes a lot of sense. I'm going to retreat my queen with the queen trade offer. If he accepts, he brings one of my pawns closer to the center. If he dodges, then I get the turn back. I have to develop my bishops and then my rooks. I'm still up a pawn. My structure is looking good. His structure is also good. We both have the bishops. He's a little closer to castling, a little ahead in initiative, and ahead in development. But that's what the pawn is for. Anytime you take a pawn, it takes time, so that's what happens. He moves his queen out of the way. What does this threaten? It eyes my king. What's the drawback? Now I can potentially develop with tempo. He probably wanted to put a bishop here and attack me, but maybe he missed this move, and you can't put a bishop here now because it hangs. Also, this is protected, so that's a free move, and maybe now g6 is coming again. So, letting me develop my bishop is probably isn't good. I also maybe had e5 first, hitting this bishop, and then bishop here. But I'm moving pretty fast, and I'm kind of tunnel visioning, so that's okay. So, he moves his queen out of the way to a square, but nothing special about this square. He just had to move it. Um, now we can feed Keto. We can even throw in a5, but um, he's threatening. What is this threaten? He threatens to win our queen. We don't want that. Um, so we should probably stop it with the pawn move. Just take a timeout. He still has to develop that bishop if he wants the castle, so... He'll be a little faster in castling. We're three moves away. He's two moves away. And he's moving first. So we have to try to survive for like one or two moves. If we can get in g6, uh, Fianchetto, castling, you know, and a rook to c8, the game is over basically. So he has to try to play dynamic and pressure, a lot of pressure, um, before I make my next five moves of consolidation. And that's his idea. My idea is obviously to develop and consolidate. Um, so he develops his bishop so that he can castle. He also has ideas like this, which are annoying. This is the problem with giving them so much activity. Um, the downside of moving the bishop is it hangs this pawn. 
Can I take it? He doesn't have bishop here or rook over. I don't see why not. It's greedy and it doesn't develop. But if I let him go here, that's a disaster for me. So I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. I'm going to waste more time. But he can't castle. And he can't go here. Or here. And his rook's attacked. So he has to waste a turn with the rook. So did I really waste a turn? If he has to waste a turn? Not really. It's almost like someone put a pawn in my piggy bank. And I still get the turn. Unless I'm missing the tactic. I don't think so. Because this is defended. Oh... Is he trying this? Check, and then if I take, he wants to check me, but then I can bishop back. Yeah, so I feel like rook f1 is forced. He finally does it. Now I need to get my king out of dodge, but this actually helps me Fienchetta with tempo. So, because I'm behind so much in time, I'm going to make this move, which normally would look, you know, as a weakening move, because it's faster. He has to do something. He might just go back. Well, he has to go back because there's no squares. And uh, maybe he has f3 to try to trap my queen there. Nah. Either way, here, I have Fienchetto. I have to castle. Does he have f3 there? If I go here. This here, then I have here. Then he never has f3. And if I go here and he goes f3 and I hit the bishop, he can take this pawn. Ah, and if I go here, f3, he's not hitting my queen, so I don't have to move my queen. So I guess I could just do this. And now that my bishop moves, my king always has f8 in worst case scenarios. It can always just move itself over. Yeah, black is much. I think black is just totally winning if you play accurately. I'm not sure which is the correct order of the moves, but pretty sure these moves are good. I mean, I, w I definitely don't want to play b5 if I can avoid it. I'd much rather play these moves. You know, I thought of f3, but he has f4. Preparing the bishop. Okay, he doesn't see it, thank the lord. He wants me to go here so that he can take. Because when I take, he thinks my rook is hanging, but it will actually be secretly defended. So if I go here and he takes, I get a piece. He gets a second pawn. And then I block. Okay, so he finally spots it, but I think he missed it initially, which is why he did it. So now he moves his queen back, but what is this move? I'm not sure, but it lets me develop with tempo. So I'm going to develop with tempo, then I'll castle, because it's a free move. I really want to evacuate my queen, but I don't see how he attacks it. He can only try to trap it with like a f3 or a f4 move. I suppose f3 and f4 prepare this check, winning the queen. But on either one of those, I castle. So he moves his queen. It just gets it out of the line of fire. This would win it if he didn't have a b pawn. This hits the rook, but doesn't win it. Let's castle now that we have a chance. Then we can do funky stuff. And look at his position. <laughs> Look at that position. 
We need some knights to try to smother and mate this guy. Can you imagine just holding up like a turtle? That's, I mean, it looks like a turtle. This is the head. That's kind of funny. Now, this has to be bad for him now. I'm up two pawns, and he has no activity. So he's trying to maybe open up the turtle. But I'm not sure how a rook trade is going to make up for everything that's happening in this position. I think it's time I evacuate my queen. Yeah, let's evacuate my queen and offer this trade. Centralize, no more traps, no more F3, F4. I feel like those were his only chances, F3, F4, at some point. He would have to calculate it because I don't do the calculating. I can throw in a queen trade with check. I'm going to do that because I'm up two pawns. And now my rook's active and my bishop's active. I mean, all my pieces are super active. Completely open diagonals and files. And this is threatened. And now we have coordination squares as such. He goes here. What is this threaten? Um, a pawn. He wants to just open up the F file for his stuff. I'm actually going to deny that by pushing and keeping his bishop and rook looking dumb. He could push past me, but he doesn't. Instead, he goes back, which is a huge mistake. I get in this check. I get the rook trade for free. And then I get to pick up these pawns. So that's a good game. He might resign. He doesn't resign. I'm going to go here because you don't want to double these pawns. It makes it much harder to queen. Um, you also don't want to let him take and win a pawn. So you take this way and that way uh, you have your passed pawn. Easy to queen. No problems. He trades, but this can't be good for him because now he has even less stuff to defend. This construction is self-sufficient. So even against a rook or a queen, they can't do anything to it. I'm just going to solidify this so that his bishop looks dumb. He goes here to win this pawn, but I'm up three pawns, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to bring my king in. You could push the pawns, but whatever. There, I pushed a pawn. Um, it's winning with no matter what you do because you're up two pawns and it's in a connected structure, right? Um, so I just bring my king up and there's nothing he can do about it except hold by flag. You know, I just push my pawns, no big deal. And now I push my pawns, no big deal. You see, and now his king has to babysit his pawn. So all you do is get your king behind your pawns, push your pawns, and they steamroll all on their own. Just keep moving your king. The king is the bulldozer, the three square bulldozer. And he resigns. So. It's very important to use your king in the endgame. Your king is essentially like a snow plow and it just keeps pushing three squares at a time. And so that's why the king is so strong in the endgame. Um, and that's, I mean, it's the, the king actually controls all of these squares and that always moves up with it each time. And that's a pretty powerful number of squares. But it's really the front three that are used in so many different ways to shoulder out the enemy king. Snowplow versus snowplow. Okay. Hopefully you learned all about snowplows. That's what I'm here for. Submit your rapid games. Goodbye.